New York City is awesome, isn't it? Look at those shots. Pretty terrific. Even more terrific, the fact that the legendary international sailing competition, the America's Cup, comes back to New York City for the first time in nearly a century. The multi-day event, sponsored by Louis Vuitton, brings a collection of the world's most experienced sailors and the fastest boats into the world's most, I'm going to call it the world's most iconic harbor, or one of them. Maybe Sydney is up there. The preliminary events are scheduled for May 7th and 8th, where teams will attempt to position themselves for the World Championship, which will be held in Bermuda in 2017. Joining me now is America's Cup CEO, five-time World Champion, Sir Russell Coots. Russell, good to see you. Oh, great to be here. How long did you work to get the race back into New York Harbor? Well, I think it's always been an objective to try and get the race back here. Of course, it originated um, here in, in a way because the, uh, a group of very influential New Yorkers challenged the best of the British fleet and, and then brought the cup back here and named the cup out after the op that won. <laughs> so, um, you know, it's, it's got quite a history here. I talk about the core, and I know I'm going to let Jack take over because Jack's a, a sailor man. <laughs> okay. But um, talk about the course and where it's going to be. Well, the, the modern America's Cup, it used to be raced out to sea, and not many people could see it unless you had access to a boat and, and you could get out there. But now the, the racing's right in, in, in close to the shore, We're in a map between of it too. the. Uh, the uh, uh, well, it's right on the Hudson River in between Battery Park um, and, uh, and the Statue of Liberty. So you can watch it from, from the shoreline, it's free to the public. And, and uh, you can either um, go down and watch it, as I said, from the shoreline or, or bring, a, bring a boat down and watch it from the sides. Now, these boats are incredibly fast. And what, what most people probably don't understand is they actually go much faster than the wind. I mean, you'd think the wind would blow, if the wind's blowing 20 miles an hour, that would be your max. But these yeah. boats can go 45 miles an hour in 20 knot wind. How do you fit in a space that small? You're going to be going back and forth constantly. Well, it's very athletic these days. You know, the, the, the sailors are uh, 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 real athletes. In fact, we. We uh, uh, put heart rate monitors on some of the sailors last time, and, and uh, two of the sailors, their, their heart rates didn't drop below 180 beats per minute in the 25-minute in the race. So it's incredibly physical, and, and these, uh, these sailors, are, they can manage the boat around a, a, the tight confines of these courses. One interesting thing also is the television coverage of this. I mean, it used to be that watching a yachting race on TV was not the most exciting thing in the world, yeah. but there's now new technology that shows so that you can actually see the grid line and you know who's ahead, which is a, which is a good start. Mm -hmm. What are you doing to try to boost that audience? Well, that's, that's one of the main things is to, to make it more understandable. And, and, and clearly, um, a non-sailing person can now follow the race and know who's winning the race or who's gaining or, or, or losing. And, the, and they can see that clearly from the graphics. So that was one of our major focuses. And also defining the, the field of play. Because before it was a wide open space and there wasn't really any relativity to it. Whereas now that you can follow the race within the, co the confines of, a, of course boundaries and you know, it, that makes it more understandable as well. Talk about the cost of, of putting a team together. Have the costs continued to go up as the technology has improved? Well, the technology is obviously fantastic. It's always been part of the DNA of, mm -hmm. the, of the America's Cup, but the teams voted to um, race, the, uh, uh, race the races this time in, in smaller boats, so they voted by majority vote to, to do that and, uh, and also make the rule more similar between the boats, so less about the technology differences and more about the skill of the of the sailing teams and of course that promotes closer and better racing which is uh, is, is great for the event and in actual fact in the first three events of the Louis Vuitton America's Cup World Series uh, first four events there's been three different winners so that shows that it's that it's a very very uh, competitive series can you handicap uh, where it's going to go now <laughs> America will be in it because we're the defenders this time around uh, so internationally who are the top teams and and can you take it all the way to the finish who's going to win well it's 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 re it's hard to pick right now I mean right now Emirates team New Zealand's leading the standings okay. followed by Oracle team USA and then followed uh, behind them is Land Rover Ben Angel Racing but the team from Sweden is very, very good, Artemis Racing. The team from Japan is very, very good, SoftBank Team Japan, as are the French. You know, um, the, the, so the, it's, it's really too, too tough to call it this And how this fantastic point. it's going to be to watch these teams compete against this, with the Statue of Liberty as a backdrop. We're, we're lucky to have you back here. Well, the New York backdrop is fantastic, isn't yeah. it? Well, we will welcome you with open arms, Russell. Thank you so much for being here. It was great to see you. Sir Russell Coots, take care.